Welcome to How to Save Your Marriage with Nicola Beer, a full show of tips and practical strategies to repair, rebuild, and strengthen your relationship. If you are currently stuck, wondering if your marriage can be saved, or you know you want to save it but don't know how to go about changing it, this show is for you. To book your free marriage strategy session with Nicola, get the free marriage ebook or donate. If you are enjoying the show and want to help keep it flowing, visit www.nicolabeer.com. Hi and welcome. I'm so happy you're here because I'm going to be talking to you today about the power of belief, visioning and building yourself up in order to rebuild a marriage either together or single-handedly, like many of the women and men that I work with on their own to transform their relationship, to stop a separation, to repair the damage after an affair. You need to be strong in yourself, confident and self-supporting as opposed to self-critical and assuming the worst about yourself and about the relationship. In order to weather the storm, you need to be able to look after yourself because it can be very difficult if your partner is saying to you, I love you, but I'm no longer in love with you. I don't feel I'm attracted to you anymore. I want to move out and have some space to think. I can't forgive you. I can't forget the past. This relationship is over. The same applies for repairing a marriage after an affair whether you cheated on your husband or wife and they are unsure whether to stay or to go, or if you've been cheated on and you're trying to convince your husband or wife that your relationship can still work or yourself that it can still work, you're going to need a lot of energy. In fact, it doesn't matter what has been said or what has happened. If you are determined to make your relationship work, then you need energy, focus and self-supporting actions, building yourself up. Most people that come to me for one-to-one support or couple support have a dream. They want to continue to work towards that family dream that they created. To create and sustain that family dream, to get back on track, you need to have the right strategies. And that's where one-to-one marriage coaching or a detailed detailed step-by-step program to get you there is needed. Whether the program is something you create yourself, one of my audio programs, a, a program that a marriage coach has given you, you need to have a plan. You need to know, okay, this is how we change from having poor communication, for example. This is how we change from not feeling connected. This is how we let go of resentment. This is how we start to get rid of stress. And then once you know what you want, which is great, you then need to step into action and the right action. So a vision and action is key. Because often I see time and time again, the default way of acting when your partner is not giving you the love, the attention, the appreciation that you desire is to fall into neediness or passive aggressive behavior. The silent treatment, sulking, not doing things for each other. Sometimes I meet couples and I say, how have you handled this situation in your marriage? And what they've both done is rather than give that marriage the love that it needs, they've starved it. They've both retracted. They've both started ignoring each other, doing their own thing, living a little bit more independently. And nothing really changes when you do that. And also, it's massively unattractive. It's unattractive to be with someone who is sulking. It's unattractive to be with somebody who has shut themselves off and is not talking to you. It's unattractive to be with someone who is asking and begging for attention and affection and being very needy and messaging you every day and calling you all the time and wanting to be all over you. So it's about having the right strategy, the right actions and the belief in yourself and feeling strong and confident and good in yourself so that you can go for your heart's desire. Having somebody who is confident is attractive. And what I always say to men and women that hire me just to work on the relationship by themselves is we need to get you 
to show your husband or wife that you're going to have a great life and you would love them to join you in the journey of your great life. And that is the energy that is attractive. If a person is a procrastinator, if a person says they want the marriage but then their actions don't follow through, it's unbelievable for the other person that wants a relationship to work or even if they don't want it to work or they're not sure whether they want it to work it's unbelievable to trust somebody who says they want something but then they're not taking any action so let's talk about belief the power of belief is well documented in numerous different fields you've probably heard numerous times about Roger Bannister the person who ran the four minute mile Everyone before that point believed that it was impossible for a man to run a mile in less than four minutes. No man had done it before. And yet all those fit runners and athletes out there were running and training every day really, really hard and none of them could get under those four minutes as it was not believed that it was possible. And then when Bannister broke that record, very quickly after, so did countless other professional runners. Because they believed it. What had changed? Nothing but their belief. They were still training. They were still eating the same thing. They were still doing the same thing. But because they believed they could do it, they broke that record. And it's not just in sport. I don't know if you've seen the documentary on Netflix at the moment. It's called Heal. And it's about the power of belief to heal the body. Scientists have found that when you believe your body can heal... You can even vision your cells being healed. And when they've done these exercises, remarkable recoveries have been made. And stay tuned to the end of this podcast because I'm going to be giving you some steps on how to create what you want in any area of your life. But as we're on a marriage podcast, it's probably going to be your relationship and your marriage. But it might be something else in your life that's affecting the marriage. So it might be an addiction you want to let go of. It might be financial success you want, a career success. So stay to the end, I'm going to guide you through the visualisation steps. So it's key to believe in ourselves, believing in what you want and believing in the marriage as well. If you believe that your partner doesn't want you, if you believe that you're not good enough, that you're too fat, too ugly, too old, that the relationship is doomed, that they never forgive you, it's not going to serve your end goal. So the power of having a belief, belief that, okay, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to take the right actions. I'm going to do the right things. And I'm going to save this marriage. That is a great mindset to have. There are literally hundreds of studies out there, if you're interested in this, to research on the power of belief and the power of visioning. And it stands to reason, doesn't it? When you believe in something you're more likely to take the desired actions needed to bring about a change. Because if you don't believe in something, you probably will put in a half-hearted effort, half-hearted communication in the case of changing a relationship, half-hearted love you're giving. Whereas if you give your full focus to what you want, if you believe you're going to achieve it no matter what, You will put in more positive action. And then, of course, when you get more positive action, positive focus, energy goes where your focus is. So if you focus on what you want, your energy is going to go to what you want. And therefore, you're going to get better results. And then as a result of getting better results and the results in the case of working on a relationship, maybe, okay, we're being more affectionate, we're being more loving, we're we're doing more things together, we've been intimate, your communication has improved, you'll start to see these results and then as you see these results you'll then believe that a relationship is going to work more, this reinforces your belief which then reinforces your actions which then reinforces your belief which then reinforces your actions and it works in this wonderful cycle of empowering belief change. Unfortunately the opposite is true as well. If you don't believe it's going to work, you're going to put in less actions. Less actions equals more reasons to believe it's not going to work, more hostility or distance. And then you're going to put in even less actions. And then you're going to feel more like the marriage is doomed. 
And this is what another cycle that couples get into. And it's often why people get great results really quickly from my Empowered Love Audio program. Because it's designed to get people to believe in themselves and also, equally importantly, to believe in the power of love. And to believe, because I give case study after case study of individuals who have single-handedly managed to turn their relationship around. Action and belief has a positive snowball effect. And if you want to find out more about the Empowered Love Audio Programme, you can go to my, straight to my website and read the page and, and see if it speaks to you. And you can also check out in the podcast series, episodes one to five of the Empowered Love Marriage Secret Masterclass, if you prefer audios. And with the link with the show, you can also go and watch the webinar. The webinar is about an hour and 10 minutes, 15 minutes long to get those secret lessons and to really change things. So this will also help you with the belief. If your belief at the moment is not strong, then definitely check that out. It's not going to cost you anything for the audios or the videos. And if you want the audio program, you can get all the details and decide if that is the right investment for you. And for that, obviously... There is an investment, which I have reduced because I really want as most people as possible to really get the benefit of having a great loving relationship. Coming home to a home where you want to be is such an amazing thing. Let's face it, there's a lot of stress outside in the world. In the news, at work, maybe driving traffic and to come home to a home where there's laughter, where there's warmth, where there's affection, attention, great communication is great for the body, great for the mind, great for the soul. And I also know as well that when men and women come to me saying, I believe that I fell in love for a reason, and I believe that my wife fell in love with me for a reason, or I believe that this marriage can be saved, or I believe that we love each other, I believe that this is worth investing in. These are the people that get the great results. So that's belief. And then there's building yourself up. To keep up the belief, you also need to build yourself up. If you're struggling to be positive, if you find you're overanalyzing everything your partner says or your partner texts and does, then it could be time to get some support, to get out of the negativity and into the positive way of thinking. Clearing negativity is essential to have a great relationship. Sometimes I have men and women say to me that they get upset if their partner is not giving a kiss or a smiley face at the end of a message or that they're overplaying conversations that they've had with their partner again and again and again. And this is so confusing and draining. And so to support yourself, you really need to switch off that over-analyzing. Instead, you really need to, to build yourself up. So these are some of the questions that I ask people to check whether they're building themselves up. So the first thing I check off is sleep. Are you making sure that you get enough sleep is something I ask. Because at this time, any time of a relationship difficulty, is your sleep is critical. A lack of sleep equals irritability and this can lead you to say or do something damaging to the marriage. If you can't sleep, you've got to ask yourself, what can I do to get a good sleep? Things like turning off the TV and screens an hour before bed, meditation, hot bath, shower, yoga, massage. Here are some of the things that some of the people I work with decide they're going to do after our session. When I work with somebody to change their relationship or to work out whether they want to change their relationship, I give them a sleeping and calmness hypnotherapy designed to help them get off to sleep to put their mind at rest. Because a lot of people, they say they're fine in the day, and then as soon as they put their their head on the pillow, sorry, I can't get my words out there. As soon as they put their head on the pillow, they, all of a sudden, their mind starts racing. They start thinking of all the things that have been said throughout the weeks. They get angry, they get anxious, they get annoyed. And so sleep is, is a really important thing. When we sleep well, we feel well, and this is going to impact the relationship. The next thing is looking after your body. Are you eating and moving in a way that supports your body? Are you nurturing and looking after your body? How we treat our body impacts our energy, and you need a lot of energy to focus on 
rebuilding yourself and a relationship. And then there's the mind. Do you give your mind a rest? Do you give yourself time to have a break? Are you kind to yourself with the way that you think? A lot of people say to me they're struggling with guilt or they're stuck with regret and worry and their mind is just thinking over things. So we find activities that they can do to calm their mind. Or I'll give them a panic attack or an anxiety calming hypnotherapy to just feel more at peace. And then are you speaking positively to yourself? Are you building yourself up? Are you praising your efforts? This is really important when fixing a relationship. Saying phrases to yourself like, I'm doing the best I can. I'm worthy of love and respect. I'm getting better and better. I'm a good person and deserve a happy marriage. I'm focusing on what I can control. These are the positive things that you need to be saying to yourself. Especially when it comes to trying to make another person happy. You can only do your best. So am I focusing on what I can control? And really just saying, I'm doing the best I can. Is soothing. And the next one is, do you feel your emotions and release them in positive and supportive ways? It's important to feel the emotions and release them in healthy ways. And if you haven't heard the episode that I have done, created on this, then do check that out. It's the episode, uh, just should be just before this one, on how to release emotions and how to deal with overwhelming feelings. Because we need to feel our feelings and then we need to release them in healthy ways rather than getting into passive-aggressive, angry, silent treatment or worrying or acting needy or doing anything else that is not supportive to you or the relationship. And then the last thing really to build yourself up is just to get yourself to assume the best. Do you assume the best or the worst in your relationship right now? Often when a marriage is in crisis, we can get into crisis mode and we can then see everything as a crisis. For example, every time you have a disagreement, do you take it personally as an attack? Are you constantly feeling like your husband or wife is against you or is doing things to hurt you? Let's say your partner turns you down for sex. Do you say to yourself that they find you unattractive? They're no longer interested in you. They're doing it to hurt you. They want you to feel bad. They're attacking you. Or do you simply say, okay, they're tired, they're stressed, just not in the mood. Maybe I need to just let it go. And maybe there's something I can do to make them feel more connected to me, more happy with me. Maybe I need to show them love and empathy. So instead of always assuming the worst, that it's always about you or that they're doing it as an attack or that it's some kind of punishment or being in self-pity where you're thinking, why aren't they giving me love? Why do they not want to spend time with me? Why this? Why that? Self-pity is not going to build you up. It's not going to help you change the relationship either. And I know this may sound a bit harsh and obviously I'm not meaning it to sound harsh, but I'm just trying to share that having tried that myself in the past um, I know that that self-pity mode that we can go into is just going to keep us more stuck not believing that we have the power to change things and going away from our dream and what we really want so if your mind has a tendency to run wild ask yourself will this even matter a month from now is this really important or six months from now. And then you can also ask yourself, what else could their behaviour mean? It could mean, as I mentioned, they're tired, they're stressed, they're not feeling connected, and then you ask yourself, what can I do to help? And then the last thing, which has been, again, scientifically proven to create results in people's lives, is the empower of visioning. Giving yourself of envisioning and visioning how you want your day, your marriage and your life to be like. It's been shown to have life-changing results in health, wealth. So I invite you to give it a go for yourself right now. You might want to get a notepad and pen if you want to write down the steps or you might just want to 
keep listening to this episode and fast forwarding to this to do it again. So the first step is to close your eyes and bring to mind the vision of what you want most. If there's several things, pick one that's most important to you right now, whether for yourself or your marriage. What do you really want? And then ask yourself, what will you need to see, feel, hear, to know that you've achieved it? What will need to happen? So let's say, for example, you want to envision you and your husband or wife renewing your wedding vows in two years' time, or going on a romantic holiday, or having another baby, or travelling the world, or living in your dream home, or being intimate in three weeks' time, whatever it is. And notice where will you be, what will be said to you, who will be there, how will you feel. Really get into the feelings of how you're going to feel. Getting really clear on what you want to achieve and how you will know that you have it is important. So that's one. So just think about that and vision that. And then the second step is then really getting into your mind and imagine yourself sitting in a theatre or a cinema. And on the movie screen is you and all that you want to happen. So then imagine everything that you want to happen in this vision. See it playing out beautifully. Make the colours brighter. Really feel the feelings. Make the feelings stronger. Make the picture as big as you can. Make it really clear. Turn up the image so it's really, really crystal clear. Really see yourself. Maybe it's lots of little series of memories. Maybe you're smiling, you're laughing, you're joking, kissing. That's if you're focusing on the relationship. If it's something that's going to help your relationship for yourself, maybe it's getting a higher paid job, a job with less work stress, maybe it's getting on with your family, whatever it is. Really envision what you want to happen and see on that movie screen, playing out, add the sounds in, feel the feeling, really enjoy that process of of seeing and feeling your vision. Some people are not very visual. I personally am like that. So really feeling it if you can't, imagine or think it and then step into that movie screen step into yourself be you and then see everything that you've just been watching on the movie screen from your own eyes as if it's already happened feel your heart grow with happiness with self-approval and elation as you live your dream and your vision in that space that you imagine And keep playing it and seeing it again and again until it feels great. Until you can really feel that happiness. And then when you finish doing that, then imagine your current day unfolding the way you want it to unfold with every detail. Loving your day ahead. Loving the moment that you drink your tea or coffee in the morning. You have your breakfast. You have your lunch. You complete a conversation beautifully with your partner. You finish the task that you need to finish. You come home. You have a great time when you get in. You feel at peace. You feel happy. Great interaction. You go to bed in whatever way you want to go to bed. I was going to say you go to bed in a restful way, but maybe some of you are thinking, I don't want to go to bed in a restful way. I want to go to bed in an intimate way. Seeing how you want it to go. Dreaming up the day with all the ways that you want it to pan up from start to finish. So that is a small visioning exercise that you can do. And normally when I do this to really get into it, because it is so powerful, if I work one-on-one with somebody, what I do is I put on some music so that we've got this nice music. I get them to go into their body and to feel completely relaxed from head to toe in their body. I do them, first of all, sending love and forgiveness to others in their life. I get them into gratitude for what they're grateful for so that by the time we do this visioning, they're on a really high vibration and really feeling love and energy in their body that it's easy um, to do the visioning. So if you're feeling it's a bit too difficult to do the visioning, then either contact me and we can talk about one-to-one work where I can guide you through a vision and I can always record it as well. I always like to give as many tools as possible 
to help people. So when somebody hires me and they say, yep, let's do the visioning and or hypnotherapy, I give a recording so that you can repeat this again and again on your own without having to keep going to therapy to do that so you're self-sufficient because we don't want to be paying somebody to do the same thing with us again and again. Uh, or you can record it yourself. You know, sometimes people say, I'll, I'll record it myself, which is absolutely fine. So this can also be like a really great thing to do to create the results that you want and to help that belief. So in summary, I guess what I'm really trying to say is believe in yourself, believe in what you want and focus on building yourself up. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope there's something you can get from it. From my heart to yours, thank you so much for listening and supporting the show. It really means so much when you email me about the episodes that you've enjoyed or you email me saying that you're getting amazing results from the Empowered Love audio program. I really love hearing it. Thank you so much. I wouldn't be able to do what I love if it wasn't for you. If you have any questions or you want to book a 20-minute explore session with me to decide whether you could benefit from some one-to-one support, then the links are all on my website, nicolabeer.com. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you for listening to How to Save Your Marriage with Nicola Beer. To book your free marriage strategy session today, you can visit www.nicolabeer.com, where you can also get the free marriage fixing ebook, request a topic for the show, and make a donation if the show has been of benefit to you and you want to help keep it going. We wish you an amazing love filled day ahead. <laughs>